Tabernacle Baptist Church of Roanoke, Texas. We're glad that you're joining with us for this particular time. Our prayer is that it'll be a blessing and encouragement to you. If under the sound of this message you're not saved, we trust and pray that you'll listen carefully as the Holy Spirit brings conviction through the Word of God that you'll understand your need of salvation and you'll accept Christ as personal Savior. To the believer, we hope that you'll be encouraged and your commitment to Christ will be increased. If you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to turn with us to 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. The title of our message is, Why Was Jesus on the Cross? Why was Jesus on the cross? Heavenly Father, we pray for the blessing of the reading of your word and for the results of your word as it goes forth, that it might bring glory to you, lift up Christ. There might be those that will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and those that will be encouraged and their commitment will be strengthened after this message. Thank you for this opportunity and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now when we are, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though Christ did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God, for it hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Why was Jesus on the cross? The cross cannot be glamorized. There's no way to make it a pretty sight. A brutal bodily execution took place there. To the Roman soldiers, they took part in it. It was a form of entertainment. They would drive the nails through his flesh into the rough timber. Finally, they would lift the cross and drop its base into the hole prepared for it, causing the body of Jesus to pull at the nails. But why the cross? Why the cross? Well, first of all, we'll never understand the cross until we understand who it was that died there. 2 Corinthians 5.19 To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. It means that Jesus was the eternal, omnipotent, holy God, creator of heaven and earth and all things. Colossians 1.16 For by him, Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. Then what was he doing on the cross? Why was he there? That question is asked sometimes. Jesus Christ being God, why was he on the cross? 
2 Corinthians 5, 19. Remember, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, and not imputing their trespasses unto them, hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Christ was on the cross because of our sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 2, 10 through 12, As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. A righteous God determ demands a payment for sin. But we see here in the book of Romans chapter 3 that there's no one righteous except Jesus. The Bible tells us there was no one that understood. The Bible said there was no one that seeketh after God. That all of us have gone out of the way we're all together become unprofitable, and there's none that doeth good, no, not one. As the result, look at John 3, 18 through 19. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation that the light come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. In other words, the Bible tells us that we're all born sinners. And we need an acceptable offering that our sin debt can be paid and that we can have the righteousness of God. Or we will be, as the Bible says very plainly, condemned throughout all of eternity. And the Bible said we need a Savior. And the Bible tells us that God had determined the model or the method of salvation. The Bible says that it says without shedding of blood is no remission. And as we've looked, let us look again by memory. God set the pattern of salvation in the garden with Adam and Eve. There was a need of righteousness of which they could not produce. But in picture... The lambs that were slain were innocent and the blood was used in type for the forgiving of sin and their coats were covered as righteousness. So the Bible tells us that in Christ the blood sacrifice is accepted by God through faith as we accept him, righteousness is given that he provided. And then the Bible tells us very plainly, we've been born again and are new creatures in Christ. Look at it. Jesus died on the cross in our place. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Christ had no sin. But the Father made him to be a sin offering for we who believe. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, the Bible says there was only one sacrifice that God would accept. 
Now I know today, man in his evil imagination tries to portray that salvation is in different methods and means. But the Bible's very clear in telling us there's only one sacrifice that God will accept. You look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Now dear friend, that's pretty plain. There is no salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven. And by the way, the accepting of Christ as the sacrifice for your sin has to take place before death overtakes you. This salvation is offered under heaven or in the physical life before we step out into the eternal life. Give it among men. And here is the all-inclusive answer whereby we must be saved in other words the bible tells us plainly to have our sin debt said, paid to have righteousness provided and to be clothed in that new birth the bible said that's why christ was on the cross that's why. And Jesus further declares a very answer to Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. And it's found in John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the truth. And the truth we've just discovered. Without shedding of blood. And that pure blood. And the only pure blood was Christ. Without shedding of blood. There's no remission. There has to be. A blood sacrifice. Offered. Upon the altar. Before God. For a sin debt. To be forgiven. God laid that out from Genesis 3.15 all the way through the Bible. And the Bible says, I am the way. And then he emphasized very plainly. And the truth, the truth is, we're condemned already in that we have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. Oh, how people, how people love to quote John 3.16. But let's go back once again to John 3.18 and 19. He that believeth on him, Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Emphasizing, declaring that under heaven there's no other name whereby a person can be saved but Christ. Jesus plainly again, as I emphasize very plainly, He's the way. And the truth is, no offering will be accepted for your sin other than Jesus Christ. His death, His burial, and His resurrection. And the Bible declares He proved that He was the Son of God by His resurrection. Look at it. And the life, that's eternal life. The Bible said, He that believeth in me, though he die, yet he shall live. In Christ, the believer does not die. Now, there's a physical death because this body's corrupt. 
but his spirit and soul will live forever because God has a glorified body for it to be united with that believer for eternity. Look at it. Look at it. He said, No man cometh to the Father but by me. Oh, preacher, there's church membership and there's baptism and there's traditions and there's all kinds of information that we're discovering that that's not the only way to salvation. That's all a lie. You take just the few verses that I have shared with you today. It's very emphatic that in Christ is the only way that condemnation can be escaped. And there's no other way. There's no other name under heaven. Why do we have all of these different denominations and why do we have all of these different ways that are being presented because it's the work of man? The word of God is emphatic. The word of God is deliberate. The word of God is never changing. And very plainly, there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. And then Jesus, very plainly, and not to believe that he's the only way, is calling God a liar. And I would tread lightly when I stop to pause and think, I would call Almighty God a liar. I would say Jesus had no authority to make that command. And oh, how people get upset when you tell them there's only one way. But what about this? My mom, my dad, my son, my brother, my wife, they believe this, they believe this, they believe this. Let me say with all the compassion I can, there is no belief in anyone or anything other than Christ that will secure forgiveness and bring about eternal life through the forgiveness that Christ will give you in the new birth. Absolutely. The Bible's very plain. And look at it. Jesus said, No man cometh to the Father but by me. Oh, the devil loves to blind people. Loves to bring doubt upon the word of God. But listen to me, dear friend. If you're trusting anybody, anybody, or any means, or any way for the forgiveness of your sin and expecting to have eternal life, you will be tragically surprised when death overtakes you and you find yourself in a devil's hell. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. There are not many ways. There's only one way. And the Bible tells us, look at it again in verse 19. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Look at it. He wants us to know that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. That's why the Bible said, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is long-suffering and willing that none should perish, but would all come to repentance. Think about that. And in Christ, he will not impute our trespasses unto us. And then he has given to we who know Christ the ministry of the word of reconciliation. Oh, listen to me, dear friend. Christ in love took our sin. That is, those who have accepted him by faith in order to make salvation possible. 
Now look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. That gift was Christ. That gift was Christ. The greatest gift ever offered by God to a sinful creation such as humanity. Oh, listen. Listen. That not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, listen to me, dear Christian. Let me listen to you. Listen to me, dear person who trusts Christ. As a believer, we've been reconciled to God at the moment of the new birth. Now, what does that mean? To those who have accepted Christ as Savior, it means our relationship to God is made new. It doesn't mean that we're perfect because we aren't. But we do have a new relationship with God. We've been reconciled or brought back to Him. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Basically, we'll just look at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what's the meaning of reconciliation? We were sinners. Now we're sons and daughters. We were condemned, but now we're justified. We were enemies, but now we're fellowship with God. And you see, reconciliation goes beyond forgiveness. We can forgive someone without being reconciled to that person. We may put away the offense, but not restore the relationship. God has done both. All of our sins, past, present, and future, have been paid by Jesus Christ on the cross. He has brought us into his family. He is preparing a place for us talking about believers in his heaven. Promise that we believers will be with him for all of eternity. You see, we have been made the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin. Here we go. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, because of what Christ has done, dear friend, God looks upon you and I that are saved and he sees the righteousness of Christ. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. Now, here's the question I want to leave you with today. Have you accepted Christ or have you failed to do so? And let me conclude the answer that you give. If you have or will accept him now you're assured of heaven these things i write unto you that you might know you have eternal life to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord think about that but if you reject him and continue to do so and leave this world You'll have an eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. And let me prove that. Once again, John 3, 18 and 19. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. See, you don't have to do anything. Just reject Christ because you're already condemned. But to be saved, you have to accept Personally, vocally, Jesus Christ is your personal Savior by owning your sin, agreeing with God that you have broke His law, and ask for His forgiveness. And then ask the Lord Jesus to become your Savior. The Bible said, look at it. Look at it. Why are we condemned? 
because we have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Oh, dear friend, time grows short. It's appointed unto man wants to die, but after that, the judgment. Christ is not a way. He is the way. He's not a truth. He is the truth. He's not a temporary life. He's an eternal life. And no man is coming before the Father or woman or anybody except through Jesus Christ. Don't buy this traditional salvation so called of today because it's false. It's false. Salvation is by grace through Christ. Heavenly Father, oh, impress upon all of us, believer and unbeliever of like had it not been for calvary had it not been for willingly of christ to go to the cross we'd be without hope that's why jesus went to the cross for there was no other way no other way under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and he was the only way truth and life that the father would accept that's why he went that's why he went. That's why he was willing to be incarnate and become a man. That he might be tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Don't turn him down. Oh, under the name of Jesus, I beg you and plead with you. Unsaved person, don't turn Jesus down. You'll turn him down one time too many. And you'll find yourself when you leave this world in an everlasting devil's hell. On the other hand, dear one who have trusted Christ, no matter what comes your way, you'll never lose your salvation. Bless the message, Lord, and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for listening, and may you trust him today if you're not saved. <music>